It's time for our Good Hands Moments presented by Allstate. Josh Dobbs had a lot of Good Hands Moments today. Josh Dobbs had about 268 yards, a touchdown through the air, a touchdown on the ground. The pastronaut. He didn't know his teammates' names a couple of weeks ago. He was learning the calls on the sideline. He was taking his first snaps. And the Vikings pulled off another heroic victory today. And Bill Barnwell, we heard your take. But you have more on the Vikings and the Josh Dobbs experience and how good this team can be and how is he doing this? People like Dominique have told us that football is a complicated game and us mere mortals can't understand what a quarterback has to do to succeed. And Josh Dobbs, he needs like three days and two snaps to the center to do it. Josh Dobbs is fast. Josh Dobbs is smart. And there's like six plays you need to learn to be an NFL quarterback. He knows those six plays. He's fine. Like, you got to know boot. You got to know like mesh. You got to know four verts. If you know that stuff, you'll be fine. I, I, Josh Dobbs is just a well-prepared, smart, thoughtful quarterback. And that's what makes the, the fact that nobody was willing to offer more than that so frustrating because we literally saw him do this eight weeks ago. We saw him take over the Cardinals who don't have the talent the Vikings have, who don't have the coaching the Vikings have. We saw him take over that team and prove he can win and be competitive despite the fact that he didn't know his teammates' names, despite the facts that everybody had left them for dead. And that is infuriating to me because you have so many general managers making millions of dollars who have these billion dollar teams they're running and yet they couldn't be bothered it was too much work to trade a sixth round pick straight up for josh dobbs or possibly give up a fifth round pick because you know they're going to be so valuable and i'm not always the biggest fan of what the vikings did but remember they made this trade not knowing they were going to need josh dobbs or sorry no They did make this trade knowing they were going to need Josh Dobbs, but they made this trade not expecting Joshua Dobbs to step in immediately and be their guy. And yet he's still been able to do that. And that's a credit to everybody involved. So I agree with you, Bill. Everyone who did not um, at least (laughs) give uh, the Cardinals a call and think about Josh Dobbs should be called to the carpet. However, Do you think that Josh Dobbs is the long-term answer? Because I think right now there are people in Minnesota who are considering that. And I think the defense of some of these other places is they see the Pastronaut as a cute story, but they do not see him as the long-term solution. And if you look at his numbers so far this season, he's been up and down, but never quite like dominant so that doesn't mean that he is not the long-term answer but I think that's what people are seeing is him as at best a bridge quarterback not even to the level of like Geno Smith earning yourself a a semi long-term contract I, I what do you see from Joshua Dobbs play that is lacking like does he have a superstar arm no but not every quarterback has a superstar arm i think he makes good decisions generally with the football i think he can create out of structure clearly he's smart clearly he's um not just like book smart but clearly football smart in terms of learning things and picking stuff up quickly he's done it twice now um you know i i i think does he have every single trait you look for in a quarterback no but we're not very good at judging quarterbacks. And I think when you have quarterbacks who are not six foot four guys who um, are traditional pocket passers, you're going to poke holes in them. And I think that's what my problem is here is that you had a player who was, you know, a guy who was going to create more scrambling was going to create more as a runner and people found excuses to not value him that way. So if he keeps doing this, like whether they make it to the playoffs, whether they win every game or not, if he can be this caliber of player for the rest of the year, I think absolutely you give him that Geno Smith contract and see if he can do it again in 2024. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with you. I, I think I was doing my best to create the devil's advocate strong, argument, man. but um, he what he has done on the field is enough to project, so far what I've seen, enough to project that he's worth giving a shot, given that what and, we look at for lots of other quarterbacks is what they've done not in the NFL, projects them in hope that they could put together a couple of games like Josh Jobs just did in back-to-back weeks. And he's doing this with no Justin Jefferson. He's now lost his starting running back in back-to-back games. Cam Akers tore his Achilles last week. This week, Alexander Madison left with a concussion. Like, the Vikings were not a great team without him. I don't know that they were a great team with him, but they were a pretty good team for the last year and a half with a quarterback making a ton of money. 
And now they have a quarterback who's making pretty much nothing relative to Kirk Cousins. And they look maybe just as good, maybe a tiny bit better. Is it fair to say? Yeah. I mean, we started with this talking about quarterbacks, quarterback expectations. Josh Dobbs, who would have thought 10 weeks into the season, Josh Dobbs has had a better year than Trevor Lawrence. <sighs> He's had a better year than a lot yeah. of quarterbacks. He had a pretty great year, especially. He's had if a you, better year than Joe Burrow. Yeah, if you control for expectations, <laughs> there's not very many people out here who can compare to him this year, as far as the quarterbacks concerned. Yeah, I mean, and he, he's fun to root for. It's going to be if he gets the big contract or a bigger contract or gets a team that's legitimate handed to him. It's going to be a lot less fun experience. So let's mm -hmm. live in the now.